So if you're growing in raised beds or containers, you got to be a lot more careful when cold weather's coming because it's a lot harder. What's up, Lazy Dog fam? Hope all y'all are having an awesome day. It is Thursday, November 30th here in South Georgia, and we've just received our first two frost or freezes of the season right here at the end of November, which is pretty average for us down here in formerly 8B, now 9A. And so in today's video, I wanna talk about a few things cold related that I make the mistake of assuming everybody knows but we've received a lot of messages and emails just in the last few days that tell me these are things that everybody doesn't know and i think this would be some good information to put out there especially for the beginner gardener so we're going to walk around show you some of the frost damage we got talk about whether these plants might come back whether we need to cut them down show you some minimal frost damage and then show you some plants that doesn't even bother at all so let's start out by looking at the things that are completely toast and just as a frame of reference i think two nights ago we got down to 28 or 29 the following morning there was some frost on the ground but not completely covering the ground last night i think we got down to 30 and this morning it was covering the entire ground there was frost everywhere but as soon as the sun came out it was gone really quick so as expected, our okri is toast. All three varieties we had planted, the dwarf cowhorn here, the Ruiz over there, and the Uncle Bucks. We harvested all this a few days ago before the frost came. Now it's done. Now I'm mentioning this because we've had several people ask whether they could leave these frost-bitten okri plants in the ground and they come back next year. And no, they're not coming back, they're done. So what I like to do is just take my loppers. These may not be big enough. There we go. And I just cut them off at ground level or close to ground level. Chunk this right here in the burn pile and that will eventually rot out usually by next spring. Something else that's now toast is this ageratum here in our raised bed garden. You can see all the leaves are burnt back on that. This is a warm season flower that doesn't like those frosts. Do got a few leaves way down in here that look like they are fine, but this stuff is not going to make it through the winter. Might as well get this cleaned out. A lot of people have been asking about our little in bed worm farm. It's been covered up by this ageratum for a few months now. Once we get this cleaned out, we can pull that up, move it, get some more worms in there. And then of course our basil is toast. Basil isn't frost tolerant at all. Do still have a few green leaves on the bottom there. I guess they were shielded by the rest of the plants, but we'll get these out of here in the next day or two, free up this bed to plant something else. Now one thing that has surprised me a little bit here are these chocolate ghost pepper plants. All my other peppers are absolutely toast and these don't look that great, but they don't look like they're completely dead yet. There's still some green leaves that aren't wilted terribly in there. I did pick some of these, but didn't get around to picking them all. So still got a lot of peppers here to harvest, but I'm almost beginning to wonder if these things might make it another week or so. Now I did have one other pepper plant sitting right outside the greenhouse. It was a daddle pepper plant that a friend gave me. I think it was in about a five gallon pot. Took forever to produce any peppers, but it was loaded down earlier this week. I harvested all those peppers so I can make some hot sauce with those. And then I pruned back that plant really, really hard and put it inside the greenhouse. So we're gonna try to overwinter that plant and maybe get it back up and going next spring. And then more stuff that's toast would be our field peas, both our check bay peas and our Ozark Razorback peas over there. Now I picked these check bay peas clean earlier this week, picked the Ozarks late last week, so we still have a few peas left on there that have dried that we need to go and get. And so in addition to enjoying a lot of those peas fresh, we were able to save a good bit of seeds from both of those varieties. And by the time this video airs, we should have both of those restocked on our website if you want to give either one of these cow pea varieties a try. 
Now another cow pea we had planted, this Tennessee purple pea that did really well for us last year, just never really did anything this year in this spot. I'm thinking this was just a bad spot for it for whatever reason. These plants never took off. Got a little bit of a clean up here on our hands we need to take care of and then probably get a cover crop planted here. And then the last thing I want to show you that's pretty much toast would be our turmeric. And so pretty soon, maybe on the next video, we're going to come in here and harvest a majority of this. So now let's take a look at some very minimal frost damage, show you what that looks like. And then we'll talk about the plants that it didn't even phase at all. So kale is pretty cold tolerant. It takes some pretty frosty temps to kill a kale plant, but you will get a little bit of damage from time to time. As I've told you before, the curly kale always seems to be a lot more cold tolerant than this dinosaur kale here. And we've got some good data right here to back that up. So we can see some frost damage on these dinosaur kale leaves here. Not a lot, but a little bit. There's some more damage right here on this plant. Got a spot right there, spot right there, spot right there. But if we look over at this curly kale, it looks just the same as it did earlier this week. Now onions are usually something I don't worry about one single bit. So I was surprised to see a little bit of damage on our Louisiana evergreen shallots here. I'm not worried about it. I think they'll be just fine. Just something I wasn't expecting to see here. Also got a little bit on our Egyptian walking onions over there. Now I don't have any way to prove this, but I think the reason we saw some damage on these Louisiana evergreen shallots and the Egyptian walking onions and didn't see any damage on our in-ground onions, which I'll show you in a minute, has to do with soil moisture. So these things are so thick and they're soaking up every ounce of water I'm giving them which means it's hard to keep the soil moist in that bed. And as we know, moist soil helps insulate plants. Like I said, I can't prove that's the reason these shallots got some damage and our in-ground onions didn't, but I think it's a very valid hypothesis. Now, some other minor damage we received was on our mustard greens here. Mustard greens are probably the least cold tolerant greens out there. So we expect to see a little bit of damage when we get a frost and we have some here. You can see that leaf right there here kind of wilted over it got burnt back a little bit still got plenty of good mustard to eat here but you know are going to see a few leaves that didn't take it so well now moving on to the stuff that it didn't bother one bit if we compare those mustard greens to these collard greens here you can see these collard greens just look as good as they could look They'll be even a little bit sweeter now that they've been kissed with that frost. So our forever collards here that have been in the ground the whole year, our flash collards down there that we transplanted a few weeks ago, and then right over here, our old timey blue collards, all of these look great. And a little light frost like that isn't even gonna bother this lettuce, might even make it taste a little sweeter. And we know from past experiences that it's gonna take temps down in the low 20s to even think about bothering carrots so our carrot beds are perfectly fine can't even tell anything happened now over here in our in-ground garden plot those brussels sprouts they laugh at 28 degrees and say bring it on so they're perfectly fine cabbage is perfectly fine cauliflower is perfectly fine now we do see a little bit of damage on these broccoli leaves here not much at all they'll be just fine and here's those in-ground onions that we can contrast to those Louisiana evergreen shallots in the raised beds that did take a little bit of damage. So here's those potato onions that we transplanted out a few weeks ago. They look perfectly fine. Can't even tell anything happened to those. They are a little brown on the tips. They're just recovering from us splitting them up and transplanting them but they didn't get any damage from the frost. And then our little baby short day onions here which are growing pretty well. Can't even tell anything happened to those. So until I was able to make that onion comparison this morning, I had never really thought about this. But now that I think about it, it makes perfect sense. So if you're growing in raised beds or containers, you got to be a lot more careful when cold weather's coming because it's a lot harder to maintain soil moisture in containers and raised beds compared to an in-ground garden. 
And that's because one, they're higher off the ground, obviously they're closer to the sun, so they're gonna dry out faster. And two, the soil consistency in raised beds or containers is usually different than in the ground. Even though we have nice sandy, well-draining soils around here, this stuff that we put in our raised beds drains even better than our sandy soil does. We have to water these raised beds a lot more than we do our in-ground garden plots. Harder to maintain kind of constant soil moisture in the raised beds compared to the in-ground garden. Now I realize this is all intuitive. We're not talking about anything profound here, but this is the first year where I've been able to kind of directly compare the same vegetable planted in the ground versus in these raised beds. Last year, I think we had some cabbage in the raised beds and also some cabbage in the in-ground garden, but we didn't get a lot of light frost so we could make that comparison before we got that Arctic blast just came in and kind of wiped everything out. But with these two light frosts that we've had the last two nights, it allows us to make that comparison, learn some things, and see how we need to adjust going forward. So going forward, when we get a light frost, I probably just need to turn the drip on this raised bed system here and let it run all night, keep that soil nice and moist. Because even though we got some rain this past weekend, hasn't been that hot this week, and we're gonna get a lot more rain tomorrow, that soil wasn't moist enough to protect all those onions in there and we did get a little bit of damage. Had I ran the drip in there all night, those onions would probably still be all standing tall. So moist soil protects plants, we know that. Now it's not gonna protect them down to 15 degrees. You get that cold, doesn't matter how moist your soil is, you're gonna lose a few things. But when we're getting those light freezes like we've had the last few nights, keeping the soil moist helps a lot. So I hope you enjoyed the video today and let me know in the comments below if you've ever noticed raised beds or containers getting more frost damage than an in-ground garden. As always, you can find these raised beds and the fertilizers we use on our website at lazydogfarm.com. And if you wanna know more about our irrigation system that we should have ran last night on these raised beds, you can learn more about that right here. So check that out and we'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm.